So I recently saw a official trailer for a mod pack in Minecraft called Cobblemon, which brings Pokemon into Minecraft. It's a, a new mod pack. It's different from ones we've seen in the past. I like where it's going. This trailer makes it seem really damn cool. I've installed it. I've tried it a little bit. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install it on your Minecraft. You can check out the trailer in the link in the description to watch this beautiful masterpiece right here. Now, before we get started, I highly recommend having CurseForge installed. There is a link to this over here. This is basically an app that helps you get mod packs or update mods as there are updates for different mods in different games such as Minecraft. In this video, we'll be showing you how to install Cobblemon by using the CurseForge app. If you've got that set up, you are ready to approach the Cobblemon website, which is over here. You can read all about the different mod here, the new foundations update that adds a bunch of new stuff, new Pokemon, new held items, shoulder effects like carrying a Pokemon on your shoulder is pretty cool. You can see some screenshots of some Pokemon in the wild in the game here. So let's go ahead and click the download button. The download button will open up a new page here to ModRinth, which is a place where the mod is hosted over here. Now this is actually working for Minecraft 1.19.2, which is one of the newer versions of the game, which is quite good. It was also updated four days ago, so it's very recent, which is nice too. You can see a bunch of features here. You can see it uses the Pokemon Showdown engine for the competitive battle mechanics. So actual battling is going to be very realistic, which is cool. Okay, so let's get to downloading the stuff here. On the front of this page here, you'll see on the left-hand side here, there's a button or an area called Featured Versions. Here, you have to be very specific. There are two different types of uh, versions for this game you can install, Fabric and Forge. In this video, we're doing Fabric. You can see here under the installation notes, we are going to be using these three links here because we need to install Fabric Loader, Fabric API, and Architecture API for Fabric as well as downloading the correct version of the mod for the correct version of Fabric that you're using. As you can see here, this mod is only for Fabric 1.19.2. You can see here, here it says Fabric, this one says Forge. Click the one that says Fabric. And then you just hit the green download button at the top of the screen, that should download it. And then you're just gonna go back to that main page over here where you can see all these installation files linked over here. Of course, I'll link all of these in the description so you can actually have them directly but we're gonna go Fabric Loader, Fabric API, and Architecture API for Fabric. I'm gonna open up all of those. Okay, so here's the Fabric Loader. It's gonna open up this page here. You just click Download here, nice and easy, super simple. Download for Windows and download it. Cool, it's as easy as that. You can close it, you're done with it for now. The next one is Fabric API. As we did with the previous one, you're gonna be looking along the left-hand side over here with the featured versions. Now it's very easy to make the mistake and go for the one at the top. You need to make sure you're using the same one that is the version of Cobblemon. Cobblemon's version is 1.19.2. Fabric API, we need Fabric 1.19.2, which is this one. And then go ahead and hit the green download button, nice and easy. And then we've got to download it. You can close that one. Now for the lost file, Architecture API, we're going to be doing the same thing, looking along the left-hand side for the featured versions. Look for 1.19.2, which is going to be this one over here. It says Fabric. There is another one for Forge. We're using the one for Fabric. Click it, and then go click the green download button right at the top of the screen. And those are all the files that we need, which is great. All right, so now open up your downloads folder where you downloaded all those files. You'll see here you have a jar, you have a jar, and you have a jar. Three jars and one EXE fabric installer. With the EXE, the fabric installer, you're going to open it and you're going to install it immediately. It will open up here. It will allow you to use the different Minecraft versions here. I can use it for 1.19.2, though it will give you the option of using previous ones as well. So you can actually just leave it on 1.19.4. Once we've got that, we just click install and done. Cool. Nice and easy. Great, right? Now you can delete this exe, we're done with it, and now we just have the three jar files. At this point, we're gonna open up CurseForge, and CurseForge should look like this. You should have your Minecraft already installed from your Minecraft on your game. We're gonna go into the Minecraft, and then you're gonna see this screen here where it says like My Mod Packs, and you're gonna go to Create Custom Profile. We're gonna do Cobblemon, and we're gonna call it 1.19.2, the same as the version. Now it's very important that you change this Minecraft version over here to 1.19.2 to match the same one that the mod is, otherwise it's not gonna work. Your mod loader version, that is fine, and then create. Now that this is created, all you have to do is right click it, open folder, and this one op this will open up a folder to where this profile is located. We're gonna go inside the mods folder, and you'll see there is a fabric API already there. We're gonna open up our downloads folder at the same time, 
as you can see over here. Now, since our Fabric API is already there, we don't actually have to copy it across, but you can if you want, but it's fine. We're going to use Architectury and we're going to use Cobblemon Fabric. And we're going to copy these or move these across into this folder over here. So in this folder, the mods folder, you'll have those three files that you downloaded. And now you can close this, close that, and you can go ahead and click play on your game. This will open up the Minecraft launcher. And inside the launcher, you just make sure you're on the Cobblemon 1.19.2, which is the one we just created using the fabric loader. And we just go ahead and we click play. So let's go create a world and see how this works. And here we are in the world. You'll see immediately it tells us to press M to select our Pokemon starter. So press M, you can pick between Kanto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola, and Galar, all these different regions, and you can pick between the three starter Pokemon on each one, depending on which one is your favorite starter. Let's go with Alola, and we're going to start out with a Litten. There we go. Now to get your Pokemon out of the Pokeball, you just press R and it throws it out into the world like this. It's also a way to increase its friendship, which for some Pokemon is going to be how they evolve. In order to evolve Pokemon, they obviously need to be a certain level. You can do this by battling other Pokemon, which I'll show you now. And you press the M button again, the same button you press to select your starter to basically open up your Pokemon inventory. And once the Pokemon is a high enough level, there'll be an evolve button right over here. You can see, you can also change the moves, you can see the stats, and you can also customize your party. All right, so let's bring it back into the Pokeball and go find another Pokemon. You can see here is one in the wild right now. I think this is a Pidgey, just a level 15. Mine's a level 10, so I don't really want to battle that. There's a Wooloo on the, on the snow mountain over here. There's just a chill. I thought it was a sheep for a second. It blends so much in with the sheep. It's actually just a Wooloo. You'll still be able to find mobs like cows and pigs throughout the world. There's a little Pokemon over there. Let me see your Pokemon. What is that? So aim at it, press R to battle. This will kind of pause your character in a stage over here, but you can press R again and you can still move around, but we're actually still in the battle. So if you're like building something, you just have a battle going on there. You just go ahead here and you press R again to switch back into the battle or to move around back to the battle. If you want like a different move, like if you want to like, you know, move to a different position, press R. We're going to battle basically by pressing fight. We can do Ember and this will attack. You can see here there's no animations or anything yet. This mod is a work in progress, but it'll be super cool if they do end up with like some kind of like animation attack in the middle or something. But you can see here, our health went down and Iggly Buff's health went down as well. We're going to fight again. We're going to use another Ember. Looks like it's at 7%. We can't catch it because we don't have any Pokemon balls. We can't switch because we don't have any other Pokemon yet. But we can run away if we need to. But we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to beat this one. Boom. It's defeated. Once it's defeated, it will basically disappear like that. And we'll gain experience for our Pokemon. 110 experience, but not enough to level up just yet, I'm afraid. If we go ahead and we look in the inventory and stuff, these are things you can craft here, like the Pokeballs, all these different types of balls over here. And you can actually use these to throw them at Pokemon. So we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a bunch of these to our hotbar over here, maybe some Ultra Balls too. And the way that we do that is we see a Pokemon, we right click and kaboom. We just throw the ball at it. And then you hope to God that it catches. Please, 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 please. We caught it. We caught a Geodude and it's immediately in our party as well, right over here. Very nice. You should know that if you throw your ball somewhere else and you miss, the ball does look like it breaks. If a Pokemon does not get caught, the ball also breaks. So while you're out in the Pokemon world over here of Minecraft, you're going to be looking for trees like this. These are Apricorns. Now these are actually going to be used in the recipes of crafting different types of Pokeballs in the game. Much like normal trees, you can harvest this tree, replant some seeds, and actually grow your own apricorn tree seeds so that you can increase the income of your Pokeballs. So that you can go around and try and catch everything. Like this Wooloo over here. Get in my balls. You also get structures like the PC and the healing machine. Which, as you can imagine, the healing machine literally just heals your Pokemon up to full like it does in the real like Pokemon games, which is pretty cool, but you can't use it very often. But that is how you're going to heal up your Pokemon. And the PC is a place where you can actually store Pokemon. So when you catch a bunch of Pokemon, you can go to the boxes over here and place your Pokemon for storage. And this is where you're going to keep all your Pokemon. And you can do this in a bunch of different boxes like you would in normal Minecraft, I mean, normal Pokemon. 
you have 30 boxes to store Pokemon in. Other than that, you just play normal Minecraft with Pokemon around in the world. And you can even harvest Pokemon for resources sometimes. I get rare drops, held items and stuff that you can equip on the Pokemon or use to evolve the Pokemon within the game. Get in my bowl, Wooloo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching.